Good morning, good morning in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I welcome you all this Independence Day weekend. I'm so glad to see so many of you here to the one and only Trinity United Methodist Church here in LaGrangeville, New York. It is a warm day, it is a sunny day, it is a day of hope and joy. And let us now continue with our worship. Do you like dancing? Yes, see you. Let us now join in our call to worship. You may remain standing if you will, because you're going to go right into the hymn, or please be seated. In this time of year, we need to be comfortable. So whatever you feel the need to do, I tell you, I uh, led a um, funeral celebration of life service on uh, Friday, and we had over 100 people there. Uh, by the time I finished, we went there, and then we went to the uh, cemetery. I got in my car, I got home. I almost, I, I did collapse. I was, I was out for like six hours. I can't, if you see me hopping around or acting strange, just tell me to sit down. And I'll tell you this, <laughs> but you know that it, it just, we all, and dehydration, it's a very important thing. Please be conscious of it yourselves. Let us join in our call to worship. From the midst of our real lives and real problems, we come to seek courage from God and support from each other as we focus on the gift of freedom. As persons who love imperfectly and who are loved imperfectly, we come to be renewed by God's love as we remember the power of being in a community of God's people. Let us worship and stretch our hands toward God as we recognize the blessing it is to freely worship our God. Amen. And now let us join in singing, standing as you're able. America the Beautiful in our hymnals on 696, please. Verses 1, 2, and 3.
seated. Please be seated. <clears throat> Let us now join in our unison opening prayer. Eternal God, stir our minds and hearts with a knowing that you are at work in our country this Independence Day and every day. May all that we see, hear, and do this day, our understanding of freedom for the right of people to be equal under your love. May we look towards a time when people will see commonality and not division, to when all will find hope amidst pain, to a time when all will see love and connection in the midst of confusion. Amen. Name, amen. Now let us turn to our grace jar. Who would like to share? And we're here, people online. Welcome online, folks. Please join us today as you are able. Who would like to share grace this morning? Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it's a do or don't. We do feel a difference, but thank you for having it on early. I think that helps stir up the air a little bit. You might be making more noise than some of the airports this morning if all the engines are sitting, not going anyplace. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, grace jar time. Grace jar. Anyone in the pews? Would anyone online like to share grace? All right, let's move forward then. Young at heart message. Okay, who feels young at heart today? Who feels young? Excellent, Marianne. I'm, I'm looking around here. Yes, beautiful. We have, we have, I have, we all have flags in this church. What's the one flag you see right off the top? What's one flag? We see the American flag. And this is the flag we focus on today. It's Independence Day. It's our country. God bless our country. Did you ever wonder what this flag is over here? Christian flag. Christian flag. Does anybody know what it stands for? We have it up here. I was hoping we'd have some young ones here, but obviously it's 4th of July, and uh, we'll remind of this later. There it is. Do you see what it is? It's a bright red cross on blue, and we have the white standing for purity, the blue commitment, and see the blood of Jesus poured out for all people. It's the Christian flag, and it was in the early uh, 1900s, late, early 1900s. Uh, that uh, people decided that we needed a commonality, Christian churches. So there was an ecumenical movement, meaning different denominations got together and they said, we need a, a, um, a flag to, to show, a banner overall to show what we believe. And this is why you see it in most churches today. So flags have a, a reason now for anybody who feels young at heart. Marianne, why don't you wave the flag for a minute? <laughs> you said you felt young at heart. <laughs> What are you gonna do with her? I don't know. <laughs> All right, please. Do you want to come to the back with me? Sure. Thank you. She has more energies than some of our young ones. Okay. Now, in the future, you know what to do. Even look at that. You see, we have the the dove. What is the dove? The example of it's the symbol peace. peace, peace, and the Holy oh. Spirit coming to Jesus. The Holy Spirit. Now turn around carefully and follow me back. Now, if the choir ever processes in at some point in the next year, we can, we, I have a number of flags, a lot of bright reds and yellows, and we can have young people, Heidi, swaying the flags and leading us in or from the sides, and we have we an experience they or anybody, Marcia, of any age can enjoy. You might not want to sing, you might want to sing whatever, but I want to show you flags have a purpose. And this flag reminds us of the Holy Spirit, which we'll be talking about today. The flag here is a Christian flag, Christian churches all together, and the American flag. So know what the flags mean. It is very important in life to uh, know what you stand under and what you follow. Understand? Young people, you're fantastic. <laughs> okay. And a prayer now for the young. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the young people and all the people, the parents and teachers in this church who do so much to encourage them, keep them safe this summer, and bring them as often as possible to church. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So remember, I have a lot of them in my... Um, by the way, the main church door was off. I tried to get them in my office. I had to go through the office door. It was locked. I don't know if that was meant to be or... 
It's closed. Right? I couldn't. The front, the front when you walk in the front, go upstairs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's not locked. It just has it open. It sticks. It's really because I. There, I went up in there this morning to use the bathroom. And yeah. Okay, so I just wasn't strong enough. Okay. Uh, that must, yes, thank you. Okay, good. So I, anyhow, I got, through. but I have several in my office. Would you like, would you like to wear the flag? Hmm? I mean, I thought we were so want to do the flag. Brian, you're so young at heart. <laughs> right, Leslie? All right, now we're going to do a special reading today. Uh, we have, and for the summer, I'm going to try this. We're focusing on the gospel. Uh, one reading, uh, and we're going to split it up sometimes, other times not. And if you were the reader, I invite you to read the entire uh, reading if you'd like. Okay, we're just going to tone things down a little bit for the summer uh, to encourage people to participate. Brian, we'll be reading from Luke. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Gospel reading from Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals. And greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. For whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go into the streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to your feet will be wiped off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, on that day, it will be more tolerable for Sodom than for that town. Skipping now to verse 16, whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. And he, Jesus, said to them, I watch Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks to God. God. And thank you, Brian, very much. Please join me in prayer. Oh, Lord God, may the words that you give me that reach your people be the message you want them to hear this day. May they be words of hope, joy, and peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever wanted a superpower? Anybody want a superpower? Brian, you're not in your head. What superpower would you like? Uh, yes, I, me too. <laughs> Any surprise? <laughs> When you were a child, did you want to like fly off the roof? Yeah. Anybody else? Time travel. Yes, definitely. Which where would you like to go to the future or the past, Royal? So good. Anybody else have any interest in special powers, Heidi? As a teacher, did you have anything? Oh, I wish I had a few. Mind control. My, exactly. <laughs> Mind control. Perfect. Anybody else? Okay, these are all, all things, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but, but let's go back to right before the reading begins that uh, Brian started for us today. Uh, Jesus is, is going with his disciples. He knows his time is, is limited, and he's, going, he's heading to Jerusalem. He's heading to die, and he knows that he has to start preparing them. 
Uh, so right before our reading today, one of the disciples is saying to Jesus, oh, I'll follow you wherever you go, Lord. And Jesus looks at him and said, you know, he knows in his mind, he, says, he doesn't mean that. And sees, So he goes on, he tells him uh, what he has to do. And, and then the guy says, well, no, 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 I, I have to go say goodbye to my, my family at home. And another one said, I have to go bury my father. And Jesus, no, you know, it's got to be total commitment. Once you put your hand at the plow, you don't turn back. So he's trying to tell the disciples, this is tough work. This is a challenge. You will be up to it, but the field is full. We need the laborers. Now, immediately in this chapter, obviously they've not all run away because we have at least 70 and some readings say 72 disciples. Jesus has 72 at least around him that he calls and they're listening. And what Jesus is telling them uh, is that he's gonna send them out by themselves. He's not going with them. He's gonna send them out and it's gonna be two by two and they're going to find all kinds, they're going to be like sheep and wolves, uh, they're going to be like sheep, and they're going to go amongst the wolves. It's going to be rough. He doesn't tell them anything else, except that they are to, they are to show peace. They are to show peace when they go to a family. They're to try to remain there, not just, you know, hit and run. I remember when I started here, it was awful. Those first, it was awful, because I, you know, I'd, I'd run in here, and I'd, I'd have to leave. It was like, phew. It was awful. It was just the way the time. So I'm so happy to tell you that I, I, I don't see this ever returning to that old schedule. I mean, this is our first summer. You'd have a new pastor this Sunday. Just, if I wasn't appointed another year this week, this is the cutoff time. And it was, I'd have to run here and go to Wickerby. It just wasn't fair. It wasn't good for any of us. Uh, so Jesus is saying, stay, don't run off. He's telling them that. He says, cure the sick and see and tell them that God's kingdom has come to you. So he's telling them, they've been waiting for this Messiah. Tell them, yeah, he really is here, the one you hear about. It's really happening. So they go off. They don't know they have any special powers. So he also says, because they're concerned about, well, what if they reject us? I would like two models today. Would you like to be on my models? Yes. Who would like to be Jesus? <laughs> we have very few here. We can do this. Okay, we have Jesus. Stand right here, please. Okay, and person, person. Human being, <laughs> you'll see this. I'm gonna read this in your mind. Okay, Jesus, person, disciple who's being sent out. All right, if you are talking to somebody, okay, and you are rejected, you're rejecting Jesus, okay? They are rejecting Jesus. If the person rejects you, they are rejecting Jesus himself. And whoever rejects Jesus, is rejecting the one who sent me. Who sent Jesus? God. Remember I talked about who God was and the, everything for everybody? You are turning everything against you. you know, you're just choose, not choosing life. So you have to choose Jesus. That's the whole focus of being a Christian. And they want them to be aware of that. Thank you, volunteers. Yes, very good. <laughs> I will never make you do handstands or anything. No, I could not could always stand up last week. That's, um, so that he wants you to know that, um, that this is all something they're going to do. So they go off. We don't know how long they were gone, uh, but they realized that they were having some success. And Jesus didn't say, like, you know, you had to bring 10 new members back. You know, you have to cast out 14 demons. He didn't give them any of that. He just said, go out. So they come back, and they're overjoyed. And why are they overjoyed? They say, in your name, we cast out demons. So that's the first thing in your name. Now, when I start the service, I usually try to say, in Jesus' name, welcome to, because it's not my church, it's Jesus. This is the church of Jesus Christ, and anything that happens is because he is here with us. So the, he's, they said that, but Jesus also notices, oh, they're getting a little cocky here. They're so happy. They cast out demons, and he says to them, I gave you the authority to cast out all the power over the enemy so that nothing will help you. Do not rejoice that spirits submit, but that your names are listed in God's kingdom. In other words, you're saved. That's what you should be joyful about. Not the fact that you did this wonderful deed and people probably clapped and cheered. And we should also remember that when we do something and you think, gee, that was successful. I'm pretty good. Yeah, you are good. I'm not saying you're not. But any a thing amazing that happens in your life where you reach somebody or you help and you have no idea remember it's not you it's the holy spirit 
working through you as he was during the, with these disciples. There's a story, you've all probably heard of Corey Ten Boom, Christian author, quite an amazing past. But she tells a story about a, uh, a woodpecker. You know, little woodpeckers you hear outside your windows are irritating, but sometimes they're beautiful in their sound. Well, this little woodpecker was pecking way off. And did any, do you all hear the thunder and lightning up here Saturday night? Mm -hmm. Okay, it was, it was wild in Fishkill. So this little woodpecker is tap, tap, tapping away. And all of a sudden a cloud comes over and a bolt of lightning, boom, hits the tree, boom, explodes it. A little woodpecker backed up with little wings and goes, wow, I didn't know I had so much power in my beak. <laughs> we don't want to be like that. We want to remember any power that comes to us is from Jesus. Now, this all happened when Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit coming. Remember, I wore my, my stole here. I'll put this on now. Uh, Pentecost. And hang on. There we go. And the Spirit came down as a dove and the fire and the flame. That's when the Spirit literally, visually came into the disciples. That was a Pentecost. But Jesus is also saying the Holy Spirit before. Remember, God, Son, Holy Spirit, all one. So they've always been. So Jesus is talking here again about the Trinity. So anyhow, the, so the Holy Spirit comes down and leads the people. Now he's telling them they have this power. Now he again is preparing them. Why is he preparing them? He can't do it all. No way he's going to do it. He knows he'll be gone. So he is preparing his, like you say, interns to go out in his place. He's sending them. Now I'm going to rattle through what he's doing again, and I want you to try to find some connections in real life. He's, he's, he's preparing the disciples to act for him, to teach, to show, to help, to heal other people. He's pre preparing them to go out into the field beyond where, they've usually, where they usually go. To go with a partner, to don't work by your own. One of the things they tell us when we go into ministry is don't be a lone ranger, okay? I work very well with the, the uh, Wikipedia leadership. I work very well, I think. I, work, I appreciate the leadership here, and I, I'm always very appreciative of all their work and how we work, work together so well. I don't come in and say, it's got to be this way. No, you can't do that. You've got to work together, and Jesus is trying to tell them that. Um, and also today, for safety. Um, they're sent beyond what is normal walls, um, uh, so they would feel the joy. Now, if Clay were here, I don't know if Clay's online today, but I know when he has taken the, the kids on mission trips, uh, construction and, and helping people who are in need, I'm sure they didn't come back and go, oh, I'll never do that again. Oh, I'm so hot and tired. That was a waste of time. No, they come back with some kind of strange joy. When, that's, when you feel God's work, God's love, the spirit working through you to help other people, you'll feel different. And he, Jesus wanted them to feel that. And he wanted them to feel the hope that they really had to stand against evil. When they saw they could cast out demons, so yeah, you know, we can do this. He wanted them to have that. Now, now, take a second. Can you connect any of the dots of what I just said with what Jesus was doing with the 70 disciples, with what we need to do today, what Jesus is saying? Right, now, let me go to Matthew, one of my very favorite verses. At the very, very end, Jesus in this gospel is ready to leave the disciples from this planet. Where are we in here? This is from chapter 28. And Jesus said, and Jesus came to the disciples and said to them, all authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus wants us to do the same thing he's telling the disciples. What's the first one? What is Jesus calling us to do? Are we supposed to get out of the church? You know this, I tell you this all the time. You don't leave the church, you don't leave the cross, you don't leave your love for other people here and walk out and treat everybody real nasty. No, I know you don't. But we must remember, we need to go beyond these walls. It's good to partner with other people, whatever mission work you're doing. If you'd like to invite somebody to church, invite them with a couple people. You know, just talk. And when you invite people, you don't have to say, well, you have to do this yet. Don't do the have to's. Just say, come and see. Come and see. Feel what, what we have here. Feel God's love. I, I was, it's interesting. I was leaving. Uh, I had to leave <laughs> Wikipedia a little early this morning because we just communion took longer and and as i walked out a truck 
flew by in front of me, so I crossed the road and um, very blue, shiny truck. And this young man inside rolled the window down and said, good morning. He said, Catholic Church? I said, no, a Protestant, United Methodist, but all are welcome. God loves us all. He goes, and off he went. So I, mean, I should have dragged him in. I, I, on the way in the morning, I, 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 drove, I always drive by this older couple. They walk by and they always give me a big wave right near the church. And I said to my people there this morning, I said, I think next, next time I, I see them, I'm going to pull down the windows and say, please hop in. I'd like to take you to church. You know, and, and just a friendly invite, just to let them know, because people don't know what's inside churches. They don't know about, and they don't know about God's love in more and more cases. Um, do you feel the joy by working in the food pantry? I know it's blood, sweat, tears, Marsha. I pray, I know. But do you feel us? Do you feel something special about it? It's about working with food pantry. Absolutely. And this is a joy of people don't experience as they, they don't know. So we're supposed to be trying to do this as well. Um, do we all need hope? Do we all need to tell people there's hope? Don't give up just because what you hear in the news. Because God is with us. Remember, God is with us. Jesus is with us, the spirit, until the end of the age. If we might be one of the few people holding the candle of hope, but somebody's got to do it. And Jesus calls you to do it. Put very simply, you've all heard uh, Sister Teresa uh, say these words, Christ has no body on earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which the compassion of Christ looks to the world. Yours are the feet which he is to go out about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless others now. It's your choice how you use your life, your energy, it's your choice whether you let God's love and energy flow through you. I pray that you will truly hear Jesus, especially now as we celebrate Holy Communion and remember how much God loves each one of us. Amen. Turning now to communion. Carol, yes. Carol is our assistant this morning. Thank you, Heidi. And I invite all of you who are online, if you have a piece of bread uh, and some juice, to please have it ready and to join in the readings. We will have your responses on the screen. We invite all to Christ Church. You do not have to be the member of any denomination to, serve, to celebrate communion this morning. Christ died for all people. We simply ask that you love Jesus and have peace in your heart for all in this world. Let us take a moment now to confess whatever Jesus needs to hear from us this day. Let us pray. Amen. Now hear these words of assurance. For God so loved the world that he sent his son Jesus. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. In the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. And now with all the people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of love and majesty, majesty. the whole the universe, universe speaks of your glory. glory. Blessed, Blessed is Jesus who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and lived among us. 
through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever by raising Jesus from the dead. Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory, poured out his life for us. And now your Holy Spirit pours over us as we remember we are people of your covenant. Let us remember that night before Jesus met with death and gave himself up for us. He was with his disciples for the Passover meal. He took the bread. He gave thanks to his disciples. So you broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When that supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, Lord, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving and as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ will come again. Now I am, well, this, this portion of the pastor, I invoke, I call on the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for all of us, the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world, the body and blood of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, Lord, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in final victory and we will feast at his heavenly banquet. To your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now let's join as Jesus taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we see the bread, it is the body of Christ. It is not broken yet, but as I do break it, you'll see and remember how Christ broke, allowed his body to be broken. We all partake of the one loaf. The break, bread which we break is the sharing in the body of Christ. The body of Christ broken for each one of us. As we see the cup, this is considered the cup of salvation. It is Christ's blood of the new covenant, the promise God makes with us, poured out for all through the forgiveness of sins and the redemption of the whole world. The blood of Christ poured out for each of us. Okay, and now, uh, Carol, would you? Mm -hmm. This individual bread covered over there, I believe. Mm -hmm. There, yes, thank you. There you go. All of our communion assistants do such a wonderful job. So much appreciated. And Royal, thank you for ushering at this point. All are invited. Please come as you feel able. The body of our Lord broken for you, Mary. The body of our Lord broken for you.
rest of the body by my perfect meal. Okay, just the papers, that's good. That's, that's the body of our Lord broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Bob, the body of our Lord broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Carol, the body of our Lord broken for you. And the blood of our Lord broken and shed for you. say just a, a teachable moment i would have stopped immediately and very carefully picked up the bread of her ben bread to treat, treat this very very holy this is just papers uh just like when we and i always remind people online when you're uh, participating in communion uh, these have been blessed they're consecrated and the bread that is not used and the juice is returned to nature or you can consume it as a human uh, but we don't just throw in the garbage. We, this is a precious gift, and we recognize it as such. Please join me in our closing prayer for this communion celebration. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us through Jesus. Wherever we are, remind us that we are one in your eternal love and promise. Fill us with your gracious love, patience, and peace every day as we live as Jesus taught us, serving and loving each other. Amen. Now let us join in singing and hearing the words of the summons. 2130, in books or on our screen.
please be seated. Please be seated. And let us now, Joey and I, our time of prayer. Are there a new prayer uh, that you'd like to add? Does anybody like, yes, Carol. And he was there. Good. Yes. So wonderful. She had family of so many ways that got her. Thank you, Carol. I know. Easter. That's wonderful. Good. And we're here for you. If you get lonely, call me up. Call any of us up. We'll chat with you. <laughs> Okay. Anybody else? Anybody online? Do we have many online today? Oh, good. Good, good. Okay. All right. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for our church family, and we thank you, Lord, for the hope we have in you. Lord, we thank you for our own homes and our families and our productive work, work that you provide us with, that you inspire and fill us with energy to do. Lord, we ask protection for all first responders, all men and women in the armed forces, all men and women in medical fields, all who stand in any gap to protect and help each other. Lord, we ask protection for our children this summer and their parents, and may, we ask, may the teachers all have a break and energy, fulfillment. Lord, keep everyone safe with joy and again, productive free time, particularly for the young. Lord, we ask for the border challenges in the country. We ask for the fentanyl drug concerns. We ask people, we ask for your help, Lord, in the civil unrest and for the encouragement, Lord, to, for us all to listen to each other, respect each other, and we may help us remember, Lord, that we all have one God. Lord, we ask for your guidance for our government leaders of all levels around the world. We ask, Lord, that wherever anyone in their home find themselves needing medical or emotional support, that they find it. If they find themselves in abusive situations, that it be realized and, and helped. We ask, Lord, for people of the Ukraine. We ask, Lord, for people around the world who don't know, who do not have the freedom to worship you. We ask, Lord, traveling mercies for our friends on the road. And Lord, we ask, Lord, for all the United Methodist churches who are today beginning with new church leadership. We ask, Lord, for prayers for church formations. We ask, Lord, for your guidance and sustainability, Lord. Fill us with your spirit and joy and hope, Lord. We ask this. Lord, we ask personally, we ask for Donna. We ask for Barbara, for Rick, for Sharon, for Shirley McRae and family for Bud Thompson, for Ralph, for Ann, for Dottie, for Brian and family, for Carol, for Carl, for Fiona, for, for Doreen, for Susan, for Patty's sister and her nephew, for Rose, Joe's mother, for Joe's grandmother, Millie, for Gail, Stephanie's mother-in-law, for Karen's friend, Ruth, for Victoriano, for Chandra, for Cheryl, for Rose, a dear friend of the Grants. And Lord, I continue to ask for my cousin Rosie and Janet, and now my cousin David, who is another cousin who faces pancreatic cancer. Lord, you know the situation in all of these, with all of these people and people who needs are unknown lord we ask that you be with each one give them the healing they need as only you can and give them strength and hope in the future and lord continue to give us the love and hope you have inspired us with each day as we follow jesus amen
At this time, it is our joy to return back to God our tithes and offerings. If my usher or usher could please come forward. Loving God, accept back these gifts that come from our heart and the work of our hands. May they be used to help those who do not know you, those who need hope, those who need your precious healing. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. It's time to go back to the mission field. Are you ready? Do we have a few announcements yet to share? Okay, uh, the summer office hours, remember now, uh, June 28th, uh, we've already started. Eileen, our secretary, is there from 9 to 12. Uh, I am going on vacation this week, Tuesday morning. I'll be back early the next week. Uh, please, any, uh, any concerns, any pastoral emergencies, contact either Marcia or Karen, our lay leader. Okay, they have the numbers. There's an elder in charge. If there's any situation at all, please let them know. Uh, Love, Inc., would you like to say something about that, Patsy? Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, bus trip to Lancaster, you know that's kind of Poughkeepsie. Uh, Trinity Food Pantry, anything to share? Yes. Good. Don't look for hamburger and steaks. Onions? <laughs> thank you for that. Okay, um, if there are no other announcements, then let's hear the benediction. As you prepare to go and, and go back to your families and your homes this beautiful day, remember to thank God for your gifts, particularly for your freedom. Go knowing God loves you and God wants to fill you with his spirit of hope to share with others. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Love you.